Suppose we have a composite quantum system made up of two qubits. How do we describe its state? In this video, we discuss how to describe such composite system in terms of its tensor product. We define the concept of separable versus entangled states in such composite two qubit system. We also explain how one can define a reduced density matrix for the subsystems and from which a measure for the degree of entanglement can be established. We introduce the Bell states, which are two qubit states with maximum entanglement. Let's begin. We start with the simplest quantum mechanical system, that of a qubit. A qubit has a two-dimensional state space and is spanned by the two basis vectors denoted as the 0 and 1 ket. A physical example of such are the up and down spin states. An arbitrary state vector psi can then be written as a superposition of these two bases, where alpha and beta are complex numbers, and the sum of their modulus square must be normalized to 1. This ensures that the inner product of the state vector psi is 1. Now, consider a composite system comprising of two qubits, whose state vectors belong to the Hilbert spaces HA and HB. The state vector of the composite system, big psi ket, is then given by the tensor product of the state vectors of the constituent system as shown. Here, we show explicitly how to perform the tensor product of two constituent state vectors. The tensor product takes the dimensionality from 1 by 2 to 1 by 4 as shown. Notice how each element of the first vector is being concatenated with the second vector. Now, what happens to the operators in this two-qubit composite system? The new operator is also given by the tensor product of the two operators from the constituent systems, herein denoted as operator A and B. We show here explicitly the tensor product of two square matrices. The tensor product takes the dimensionality from 2 by 2 to 4 by 4. Again, notice how each element of the matrix, A, is being concatenated with the 2 by 2 matrix B, producing a final matrix of dimensions 4 by 4. We can show that the operator for the composite 2 qubit system, matrix A, tensor B, acting on the composite state vector, psi tensor phi, is equal to the tensor product of A acting on psi with B acting on phi. In other words, the result of the operator acting on the 2 qubit system state is equivalent to just each operator simply acting on their respective state space, followed by their tensor product. Since the state vector of the composite two-qubit system is a four-dimensional vector, there are a total of four basis vectors. It will be instructive to enumerate them. They are given by the zero tensor zero ket, one tensor zero ket, zero tensor one ket, and one tensor one ket. The general two-qubit composite state vector can then be written as superposition of these basis state vectors, where the amplitude alpha zero zero, zero one, 1 0, and 1 1 have to satisfy the normalization condition as shown. Thus far, we have shown that the tensor product of two qubit states can be expressed in terms of these bases. However, not any general state expressed in these four bases can be expressed as tensor product of the two qubit states. When the two qubit composite state function can indeed be written as a tensor product of the single qubit states psi and phi kets as shown, then we say that the composite state is separable. It is apparent that the amplitudes, alpha, of a separable state would have to satisfy very specific constraints. We list down the four alpha amplitudes as shown. One can show that these alpha amplitudes must satisfy the following condition to be separable. That is alpha 0 0 times alpha 1 1 minus alpha 1 0 times alpha 0 1 equals to 0. Let's consider an example of a separable state. A separable composite two qubit state can be written as a tensor product of two single qubit states. We let these single qubit states be phi and psi kets as shown. The tensor product of psi and phi kets yield the following composite state as shown. Recall the separability condition as highlighted in yellow. The product of the diagonal amplitudes minus the product of the off diagonals must equal zero. Indeed, this composite wave function satisfy this separability condition as shown, which is not surprising since we constructed the composite state from the tensor product of the single qubit states. 
Let's consider another counterexample with the composite state wave function as shown. Now let's check if it satisfies the separability condition. Writing down all the alpha amplitudes, we see that the separability condition is clearly not satisfied in this case. When the composite state cannot be separated, it is called an entangled state. The composite state example here is also called a Bell state. The Bell states, or the einstein podolsky rosen epr states, are unique 2 qubits composite state that possess maximum entanglement. We shall revisit these entangled Bell states and their physical consequences in a separate video. In what follows, we shall elaborate a measure of entanglement, so it allow us to establish that these are indeed maximally entangled states. Now that we have established the difference between separable and entangled composite states, a natural question will be how does one measure the degree of entanglement? Here, we introduce the concept of partial trace and reduced density matrix, which has great utility in the study of composite wave function. Consider a composite 2 qubit state function given by the big psi ket. The composite density matrix rho is then given by its outer product. First, we recall that the trace of the matrix rho is given by the sum of the inner products with the basis vectors of the composite state. For a 2 qubit case, there will be four basis states. The trace of rho returns a single valued number. The partial trace, on the other hand, performs the trace only over part of the Hilbert space, and returns a matrix called the reduced density matrix. For example, the reduced density matrix rho A is obtained by taking the partial trace over the Hilbert space B. Compared to the definition of the full trace of rho, we replace the basis ket J by the identity matrix instead. Again, rho A is the partial trace of rho, over the Hilbert space of B only. Let's consider the general composite 2 qubit state given by the big psi ket. The composite density matrix can be constructed from the outer product of big psi ket, written in terms of the alpha amplitudes as shown. The reduced density matrix, rho A, is then obtained by tracing over the Hilbert space of B only. This would thus collapse the outer product between the J and L kets, with the indices J equals to L. Thus, the density matrix rho A is 2 by 2, in contrast to rho, which is 4 by 4. We can recast rho A in terms of outer products of mu kets defined as shown. We can further pull out the factor Pj, so that the mu kets are normalized, herein denoted as mu tilde kets. It is apparent that Pj, which is given by the modulus square of two of the alpha amplitudes, has to be between 0 and 1. With this redefinition, it is straightforward to show that the trace of rho A is given by the sum of all PK. Recalling the definition of PK, in terms of the alpha coefficients, we arrived at the result for the trace of rho A, to be unity. This is simply a statement saying that rho A is normalized. In other words, if the composite density matrix rho is normalized, the reduced density matrix, rho A in this case, will also be normalized. Next, we examine also the trace of the square of rho A. Going over the math, we can show that this trace is given by the sum of all pk square. Feel free to pause here if you would like to inspect the math. Since the sum of modulus square of these alpha coefficients is equal to 1, the additional square here will cause it to be less than unity. To summarize, we have shown that the trace of rho A equals 1, and the trace of rho A square is always less than or equal to 1. As we will show in what follows, the latter can be used as a convenient measure of the degree of entanglement. Consider a separable state, whose composite state can be written as a tensor product of two single qubit states as shown. The reduced density matrix rho A is obtained by tracing out the Hilbert space B. It then yields us the outer product of the psi ket from Hilbert space A. Here, we see that the reduced density matrix of a separable state is always a pure state. In other words, the reduced density matrix is just given by a single outer product, instead of a mixture of outer product. 
the latter situation is instead called a mixed state. It is straightforward to see that rho a square will then be equal to rho a in this case, thus yielding us a trace of exactly 1. Therefore, we prove that all separable states have a trace of rho a square equals to 1. Separable states of course has zero entanglement by definition. Thus, we have shown that a separable state has a reduced density matrix that can written as a single outer product. In other words, such a reduced state is in a pure state, or a quantum state where we have exact information about the quantum system. The trace of its reduced density matrix square is 1. On the other hand, if the state is non-separable, then the reduced density matrix will not be able to be written as a single outer product. We called such a state a mixed state. Please refer to a separate video in the quantum mechanics playlist about the difference between pure and mixed state. A mixed state contains a statistical distribution of pure states, and the trace of its reduced density matrix square is less than 1. When the reduced density matrix is in a perfectly mixed state, its density matrix is proportional to the identity matrix. This means that there is equal likelihood for the quantum state to be in any of the basis states. It is equivalent to not knowing anything about the quantum state. Every outcome is equally likely. Following this through, we find that the trace of rho squared is 1 half, which constitutes the lower bound value. We shall show that the reduced density matrix of an entangled Bell states are such perfectly mixed state. Consider the example of a maximally entangled state, the Bell state, which we have previously shown to be a non-separable state. Its composite density matrix rho can be computed from its outer product, which is given here explicitly. The reduced density matrix, rho A, can be obtained by tracing out the Hilbert space B, and we arrived at the following. Written in matrix form, we see that rho A is a perfectly mixed state, with only diagonal elements each equal to half. We can then easily compute rho A square, and show that the trace is exactly half. A trace of half for rho A square corresponds to the condition of perfectly mixed state. Thus, Bell states are maximally entangled state, where their reduced density matrix yields a perfectly mixed state. We briefly summarized what we just learned. We establish a measure of entanglement given by the trace of the reduced density matrix rho A square. This measure is bounded between half and one. We show that this measure is one when we have a separable state, and that rho A is composed of just the outer product of a pure state. On the other hand, the measure is half when we have the Bell states. In this case, the rho A is in a perfectly mixed state, demonstrating maximum entanglement. We will say more about these Bell states in an upcoming video in this playlist. Stay tuned, and subscribe, so you will be notified of our future episodes.